OK, I'll keep an eye on the time. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very grateful by the, for the trust you've placed in me by uh, selecting culture as the most important, uh, important thing to talk about. Um, I think uh, I want to talk about uh, the, the change in culture that I've seen in 14 years uh, in the civil service and now six years running my own organisation. Um, we work on democratic participation and there's lots of digital stuff in that and it feels to some extent that the work that we're doing now to bring participation and democracy into government and into the way that businesses work is, is a continuation of the kind of digital transformations that we've seen over the last few years. Um, the best part about running my own organisation is that I don't have to go into the office and have a worse digital experience than I have at home. And I think the first part of changing culture is to understand the experience that people have in their everyday lives. Because digital is something that people live with every single day. Um, and in the same way that government sometimes fails to match the, our expectations, because, which have been set by private sector interactions, uh, government IT, government digital, public service digital, m doesn't meet our expectations of what we expect uh, based on digital experiences elsewhere. So I'm going, to, I'm going to start by saying very quickly four things that I think are really important and connected pieces of work that we need to do to make a digital cultural shift. Um, and we can talk more about those on my park bench. So the first is leadership. And obviously, uh, because this is you know, 2015 and not 1965, I don't mean leadership of the, the CEO makes a statement on a YouTube video and everyone you know, now gets digital. I mean something about facilitative and enabling leadership, which can be at any level of the organisation. And that facilitative and enabling leadership has to give the mandate for people to try things that are different and to try digital approaches and to try you know, open participative approaches, things that make people feel a little bit less comfortable in their work zone, maybe a little bit more open to criticism from the public. And I think that the reason for that mandate is twofold. The first is people do need to be told that this is the way the organisation is going. But also, they need to know that there are going to be positive benefits for them in experimenting, rather than negative consequences to getting it wrong. Uh, and to some extent, this is, what's, this is what uh, is called an Odysseus strategy. If you, if you remember Homer, Odysseus had himself lashed to the mast of the ship so that he wouldn't hurl himself into the ocean when the, he heard the siren song. And the siren song that leaders have is, oh my God, we're going to be criticised. It's particularly true in the public sector, but it's true in the private sector as well. So the Odysseus strategy is to make sure that people are really, really confident that you believe that there is a permission to try these digital experiments and to try things that are a bit different. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, that uh, the next speaker will talk about innovation and innov that's an essential part of innovation as well. With that mandate, you have to give people the skills to make use of it. And I think that, you know, Tim's point about skills is really important. Learning and development is an essential part. And, you know, I was chatting with, uh, with one of the people sitting next to me at the table earlier on about Age UK and small, small organisations. Age UK is, you know, in the voluntary sector terms, you know, Microsoft, right? It's vast. It's vast. And people have varying degrees of, of love for it. Um, but at the same time, it's working with a sector that's full of tiny, tiny organisations who are really committed on very, very small goals, most of which do not include we get our people to do digital. So part of the skills mix is not only making sure that you and, your big, you and big organisations give people the right skills, but also there are skills opportunities for people who don't have the budgets and who don't have the resources in the third sector and elsewhere to make those skills conversations really work and to make sure that the skills are spread right around the sector. I have two minutes left, so one minute for each of these next two. So from those skills and with that mandate, you need to give people opportunities. And those opportunities can come in all sorts of forms. Sometimes it's about taking on a project in a very formal sense, but I think it's equally important to give people the opportunity to step outside their normal working roles and to experiment in different ways. So the last time I was in this building was for GovCamp, which was about three years ago. It's an unconference uh, on government technology, uh, which Tim knows very well. And, uh, and we had a really fantastic time. And one of the things that was a highlight of, of that particular GovCamp was that Mike Bracken, the new director of GDS, came in and said, Hi, I'm Mike Bracken. I'm the new director of GDS, and this is the sort of stuff I want to do. Now, what was interesting about that was that it was an unusual piece of formality for GovCamp. People normally come in and they you know, talk about the things they want to talk about, and they're not in a work mode. So that, for me, marked a bit of a transition from when digital was this thing that was being pushed by a kind of rebel alliance of people inside and outside the system shouting upwards, going, come on, let's do something different, to the point at which the system suddenly took on board. We do need to do something different and try to change things. And GDS has been a great success, but there's still a lot more to be done in terms of transforming the expectations that people have about how digital makes a difference in their work. And finally, you have to give people the incentives that come from that. Because the most important cultural message in every single organisation is people like you are doing things like this right now, and it's good for them. 
So if, if you are aligned around a particular mission, if you are aligned around getting promoted, if you're aligned around making more money, then these are the sorts of things that you need to see will be advanced by taking a step forward on digital and will be advanced by having the skills that make digital work. So if you can connect leadership, if you can get leadership mandate skills, opportunity and incentives, then I think that's the way in which you can change culture because culture does eat strategy for breakfast, but it's a lot e easier to write a strategic plan than it is to write a culture. Thanks very much.